Welcome to the wonderful world of dance, bringing you exclusive interviews with top dancers and choreographers and reviews of the world's best companies across the globe. You can find lots more on our website at thewonderfulworldofdance.com. Hi, this is Savannah Saunders from The Wonderful World of Dance, and today I am super thrilled to introduce Royal Ballet soloist Tristan Dyer, who's joining us today to talk about World Ballet Day, which is coming up on the 2nd of October. World Ballet Day gives us ballet lovers 20 hours of live, behind-the-scenes footage from five of the top ballet companies around the world, including the infamous Royal Ballet, the Bolshoi, and the Australian Ballet, plus other guest companies. So to talk to us today and give us a little bit of a behind-the-scenes feel, let's say hi to Tristan. Hi, thanks so much for joining us. Hi, hello. Thank you for having me. So Tristan, where are you at the moment? I have just been led to a little box out front, actually. So it's a little private room next to the royal box. So this is new for me as well. Mm. You know, it's fun when we do these little interviews that we get led to these new places throughout the opera house. So it's kind of fun. So you're so you're literally almost in the audience section of the royal opera house. Um, Absolutely, yeah. We. It's funny when you cross over from backstage to front of house. There's that instant change of of interior and it's 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 great to come on this side of uh, the stage too at times and you're actually you'll be looking almost back at the stage where you perform you know constantly it must be quite interesting to see the you know it's so beautiful in the opera house and it's so large as well exactly exactly no which is always great i love coming up front because you really get a sense of then how the audience feels and you know we really get wrapped up in our own world behind the scenes um that it's great to just come out front and experience that whole that whole life and lifestyle that people come and enjoy when they come to see a show and world ballet day will take us behind the scenes which we can't wait for but before we talk about this amazing day which we all mark in our calendars um let's sort of go back a bit and um tell us when did you start dancing yourself and what made you start dancing in the first place so I'm actually a classic case of a first-time dancer, and it was my grandmother took me to a production of The Nutcracker. I was about, I'd say, four years old, and, uh, you know, I got one say after the show, and I met some of the dancers, and I really, it was fun because they invited us up onto the stage. And I think from that moment, just being up there and feeling that environment, it really... It, it impacted me so much that from then on, I begged my parents to take me to classes, which they were so supportive of. And it's something I have just continued. And, you know, here I am. That's really amazing because, you know, that sort of first contact that you're talking about with dance and dancers um, in a theatre yeah. setting is sort of really what World Ballet Day tries to do, isn't it? About really bringing people you know, into the the ballet world that you live and exist in every single day. So a little bit similar, but in, using new tech, I guess, or social exactly, as we live. Exactly. Um, and you, you're American. You grew up in Rhode Island. And, I did. Yeah. And, but you've actually also trained at the National Ballet School of Canada, the Australian Ballet School, before heading over to the Royal yeah. Ballet. My goodness, there's such a roster. Tell us right, about that experience. It. What was that like in those three different places? I mean, geographically, you know, culturally. I know. Well, before I knew it, I mean, I'm 27 now, so it's funny looking back at mm. that. They almost feel like complete different lifetimes. Yeah. But, um, you know, we moved from my dad's work, actually. He was in the okay. corporate world at the time. Um, so I am originally American from Newport, Rhode Island, which is actually where I did start ballet classes and where I saw the production. We then relocated to Toronto, Canada, and I was lucky enough to live in the city where there was the main ballet school, so that's National Ballet of Canada, um, the school for them. So I was there for three years. Uh, I was actually involved in their production of The Nutcracker, which I think was my first real show with them. Uh, As a kid, I was about eight to 10 years old. And then from there, we relocated to Australia And also, by chance, ended up in the main city, Melbourne, where the Australian Ballet School was. So it was very convenient and it was so easy and accessible for me to just keep up the training and stay on the journey I was on. So 
by the time I reach 16, I think it's very important you evaluate where you are and where you believe your future will be. Mm-hmm. And going to a vocational ballet school is important by 16. Yeah. And you should probably aim, I would say, for the company that you would like to be in eventually. So for me, that was the Royal Ballet. Because mm-hmm. it's always better to be in a feeding school to a company so that you're already involved in that atmosphere. Yeah. And um, what was it about the Royal Ballet? I mean, it's almost, um, you know, it says itself, but what was it about the company that you were thinking out of, you know, you could have gone to the Australian or the National Ballet so no. of Canada. What was it about the Royal Ballet that is made it the company that you really wanted to join? I think first off, it's really the history. It's mm. just, uh, it's phenomenal. And the, the ballets that were created here from Frederick Ashton to Kenneth McMillan, mm. uh, they are just timeless ballets and the classics that the world dance today. And I think still being here, knowing that this is part of history and this company that has shaped so much of ballet history, that was definitely my first draw to the company. And when World Ballet Day takes place, there will be loads of young male dancers who will be tuning in across the world and watching yourself and other um, male uh, company members, you know, taking class, warming up, doing their rehearsals. Tell us, what is your typical day like at the Royal Ballet? So my typical day, which I think it is, it's amusing what, uh, sometimes when I meet some uh, people and they'll ask me what my day job is, mm. thinking that I'll just come in and uh, kick my shoes off and do the show in the evening. But we are here from 10 a.m. in the morning and we'll always do a a regimented warm-up class, which is strictly to keep our technique in shape. Uh, and then we'll be rehearsing all day. So we, we do about 12 different productions throughout the season, some of them being new works, which require a lot of time with choreographers, others being revivals, but you'll maybe do some new roles. So rehearsals will go from 12 till 6.30, and then depending if we have a show that evening. And... Well, you have danced so many different roles um, in your time. You've been at the Royal Ballet almost 10 years. It's coming up to quite a sort of remarkable moment for you, I guess, in your right. career. Yeah, yeah. Um, what are some of your favourite roles and why? Favourite roles? And this actually links exactly to what I was saying about the history, and there's mm-hmm. a ballet called Symphonic Variations. Oh, yeah. And that was created by Frederick Ashton. And... Um, it's really one of the most phenomenal ballets, and we actually have just brought a DVD of that ballet out. Um, six of us are on stage, three boys, three girls, and it really is something. And we're on stage for the entire piece. It's about just under 20 minutes long, and the music is just so moving. And once the curtain goes up, you just feel that unity between dancers and this incredible world and I think it's just he's created this world you can escape into in this ballet which for me although it's not my most leading role I think Mm -hmm. it's really something that I hold close to my heart. And how do you prepare for those roles um, and the different types of roles and I think this is something which World Ballet Day might give viewers an insight into but what what sort of process that you go through yourself? So leading up to the show, I think it's important for me. I love to run things start to end multiple times before the show. So it's very easy to, uh, you know, work out tempos and how you want to do things stop and start. But I think it's so important for stamina. So that's my number one thing leading Mm -hmm. up to the show. I'll really push through even when things don't work out in the studio, you know, mm-hmm. you've got to pretend that it is a show to keep it up. Um, and really once, once I'm an hour or so before the curtain goes up, I think it's really something you have to, your head is in the game and you really have to then enjoy that moment. And you, you hand it over to the stage and all the hard work you just have to trust will be there and pay off. And, and that's where we should find the enjoyment. And do you get nervous? Um, 
you know, well, Ballet Die coming up, you've got potentially millions of people tuning in. And right. obviously, you know, you're probably very comfortable at the Royal Opera House um, right. after almost 10 years. But do you, do you still get nerves? I, I do. I think there's more, I, w- I would call it more of an excitement and mm-hmm. adrenaline. And it's, I do have this sense just naturally where it's live theater and, and it's really why we're doing this. So I've learned to not fret the small stuff or, and, you know, it's, it's never great to maybe think of the negative before it happens. So I calm the nerves by thinking, you know what, this is, you know, this is the moment and, and, and enjoy it. And you have to go out there and, and try and not be nervous and channel that energy to the performance. And it's so wonderful when you can really see that a dancer is really enjoying their moment on, right. on stage uh, from an audience right. perspective. And you, you can tell, I think sometimes, but not always, because obviously you're, you're wonderful actors as well and you do right. this every day. But what do you love most about dancing, do you think? Well, there are some, we're lucky here with our repertoire because we have such a variety of work. So mm-hmm. I do, I love the contrast of the narrative works and the abstract works. So mm-hmm. there really are times when you, you'll work on a new ballet and you just get to go out there and just, and just, you know, take the stage and, and the movement, it can be so free and sometimes it's not as classical and formulated. So that for me is just such an exhilarating thing. And, and then again, I do. Yeah. Sorry. No, I, I was, okay. I was, then I was going to say, I love, the narrative works say like right now we're about to open with Myling, um, and I get to play a great role, which is, his name is Bratfish and he's kind of, uh, a, a close friend and chauffeur of Prince Rudolph and through Prince Rudolph's struggles and he, he knows what's going on and he can see that he's on this downward spiral. So I think getting involved in such an intense narrative is another, incredible form of the art because it really is something uh you know it's all as acting i guess and that's such a great thing it's such a beautiful ballet it's one of my favorites i can't wait to see it i bought multiple tickets i have to say i'm going to a few okay. different performances <laughs> um, good. but you talk about you know the, the different you know the wide repertoire um, and how do you, you know physically sort of move between the different types of movement that is required I, yeah, a good question because sometimes, so we'll do the more modern works we yeah. tend to do in an evening where it's a triple bill. So there's three short works of half an hour, each their complete own entity. And uh, one may be extremely classical and, and steps that you just have to execute impeccably is mm. the goal. But, um, and you, then you'll have an interval of 25 minutes and you're in, you're in the, your next ballet doing much something much more contemporary and a different sort of fluid movement through the body. So it is that switch. And I think it does just happen naturally when you put your head into it from one style to the next. I think we're just so used to it that from rehearsing so intensely, it will, it just feeds in naturally. So let's talk about World Ballet Day. Um, Otherwise I will be drawn into discussing every ballet with you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, World Ballet Day, uh, we've, you're going to have cameras uh, following um, the company yeah. throughout the day. Tell us how you're going to be involved. So we will all, or most of the company, will be in our morning class, which is, uh, like I said, it's that formulated technique. So we start at the bar. It's more like a slow warm-up. Uh, then we'll move to the center where we then ex- progress exercises from adage and slower move control movements to Grand Allegro, which is then the large jumps, which uh, is mainly what men do in solos and whatnot. Mm. So I'll definitely be in the class, and I've just, I think we're, the, the schedule is just being released for the rest of the day, but I think you'll see certain rehearsals about four or five different rehearsals of things that we're working on i believe that there's a new work being created um so you'll see sort of a live interaction with the choreographer there too 
but uh, yeah, I think it'd be such a it's a great day always every day of the year. It, it does sound like a, an amazing day, and particularly getting to watch uh, new work being created. And you've been involved in a number of creations yourself. Um, I have. Yeah, tell us about that experience. And is this something which you find, as an artist, um, sort of quite invigorating or fulfilling creatively? It, it absolutely is. And I mean, talking about history, you then also feel like you're making your mark a little bit. And I think creating, having something created on you is, uh, yeah, it's a gift. And it's not, there aren't too many different creations a year. So I've been lucky enough to work with Liam Scarlett, Wayne McGregor, and Christopher Wielden, who are our main choreographers that work with our company here. Um, and so there's, it's really something very special. And in the studio, when you're working um, with the choreographers and you're creating these roles, what, what does that sort of relationship in the studio feel like to you? And you mentioned, you know, three of the, the biggest names of choreographers these days, particularly um, in ballet. Um, what are, they all have a, a different approach. And how does that feel for you? It is. It's a great. It's a great moment seeing how they interact with the dancers, and they'll see if something's working or not. And like you, you look at them, and you can see their brain ticking over. And oh, do I like that, or don't I? Or does that person suit what I've just made for them? And so, it's great to be involved just as much as they are to make it, the movement as fulfilled as they would like it. So, I mean, it, it, it's a, it is fantastic. Yeah, I, I think this will be one of the very popular moments for World Ballet Day, getting to see the choreographers and the dancers working together. Um, do you think, you know, where, as the cameras sort of follow you around and you're normally there in your you know, warm-up gear, as you say, 10 a.m., mm. will it feel like a performance throughout the day or will it just feel like another day for you as, as a, a dancer? I, yeah, I think it'll feel like another day, to be honest with you. We are broadening so much of behind the scenes access uh, every year. And so we actually do a lot of live cinema relays of performances, which is, I'd say that's very high pressure. Um, but if you came backstage on one of those nights, I think you, you wouldn't realize the extent of how big the evening is, because I think it is, we just have to approach it just like another show uh, you know, it's live and streamed all around the world, but it's, it'll feel like a normal day to us because mm. we can't focus on the cameras. And why, you mentioned there, um, you know, the additional pressure of this live sort of relay into cinemas. Where does that pressure come from? Is it from the number of people? Is it because it is live? What, what about it makes it extra pressured? I think anything live is a lot of pressure. Yeah. <laughs> you, but aren't you, you live know. every night? <laughs> exactly. Anything live, anything that's being recorded live. I think the number one thing you pray is that you just don't fall over. But, um, <laughs> uh, you know, that's the thing with live theater. Things happen and and millions and millions of people of watching one show in different cinemas around the world is probably the last thing you should focus on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I have, you know, I, I speak to uh, friends who go to the cinema and watch the ballet who actually sometimes love it more than being in the house or in right. a, a theatre because they get to be so close, whereas often they don't have the, you know, the seats right in the stalls. Um, so, Absolutely. yeah, it's something they feel very intimately involved with the, the ballet and with the dancers in a way in which they don't quite get if they're, you know, sat higher up in, in the gods, for example. Yes. So I'd say more for the, the narrative works. I think this, yeah. I believe another DVD is coming out and I think it was, it portrayed so well on film because it was, it's a story that opens and it's they're in a very intimate bar for characters and seeing the slight nuances in the interactions of the characters. I think seeing that close up on camera, you felt like it was more of a movie and very involved. And we, we of course try and carry our, our expressions as far as we can through the opera house, but mm -hmm. some ballets do really 
really, really work out well on camera. And that's where we get to really see and appreciate the acting technique that dancers right. have that sometimes, you, as you say, you don't get to see up close, which is quite touching and, and quite remarkable, actually. Mm. So you've been with the Royal Ballet almost 10 years, as you mentioned. Um, looking back, um, we don't want to preempt the big 10, but what have been some <laughs> of your, <laughs> your career highlights? Uh, career highlights, oh yeah. my gosh. Okay, I would say the first thing that just came to my to head is... Um, Probably I made my debut in Frankenstein, which was created about two, three years ago. And yeah. I think that being one of my first title roles of a full-length ballet um, was incredible. But on top of that, I think the highlight for me was I actually got to dance with Sarah Lamb, who mm. was the dancer that I looked up to my entire life. And I, I always tell her, I'm like, you know, there's a locker dedicated to you over at the oh. school because of me uh, with p pictures of her and whatnot. So I think that was, um, that was very surreal. That was surreal. And it was lovely because working with her was just a dream. Oh, she's absolutely incredible, isn't she? And what a great ballet to, to dance with her in as well. A new ballet as well. Yeah. Um, amazing. Yep. Um, so tell us, what are you looking forward to most on World Ballet Day, looking forward? I think it would be great. I love the idea that so many pe younger people especially can, can tune in. And um, there's not always that much footage put out there of behind the scenes mm. and, say, certain dancers that some younger people look up to you may not find as many videos as you can that you that you would like to see of them. So I think it's I think it's a wonderful thing they can they can see us live in our daily movement and and maybe that will keep them going and and fulfill something in them for for what they're doing and keep their drive up for their career and and pushing on further. Um, so I really yeah I think it's a fantastic thing to influence the younger generation. And. Thinking about the younger generation, if you can imagine yourself as one of those young dancers who are going to be tuning in, right. um, particularly young male dancers, what advice would you give to those younger dancers who are looking into the Royal Ballet world and looking at yourself and thinking, I'd love to have a career with this company or in ballet in general? Words of advice, really, yeah. Right, right. Um, growing up in this industry and... I'm sure everyone's uh, seen different documentaries and, and the grueling process we go through, which is probably, which is a part of why we get here, but they really have to do it for themselves. I think we get so caught up in what teachers might think of us or whatnot. But my number one thing is having confidence from a young age, I think gets you so far. Um, stop caring what, you know, anybody thinks about you and, and, keep your own self confidence very high because that will drive you i would say to the top that is amazing advice thank you so much that is wonderful yeah. i'm really looking forward to tuning in and, and i know all of our listeners will be as well and for listeners don't forget you can live stream broadcast uh, from the royal ballet on their facebook page and don't forget to use the hashtag world ballet day and also, if you want to learn a little bit more about what's happening and keep up to date with the schedule that's coming out, go to worldballetday.com. You can also check out the Royal Opera House website, roh.org.uk, and check out the socials as well. And, of course, don't forget to follow Tristan on Instagram, which is at Trist. I'm going to spell it, actually. That's not going to sound very good. <laughs> at T-R-I-T-A-N-D-Y-E-R. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Hopefully I got that yeah, right. Go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tristan, for talking with us today. And I can't wait to see you on World Ballet Day. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Don't forget to subscribe. We've got some incredible interviews coming up with principal ballerinas and renowned choreographers. We love dance and ballet, and we hope you'll love us. Join us on Facebook and Twitter.